It is a dark, stormy day here in Sydney, but just down the road from me is an awesome place to be at the moment. Outside this uh, scary, oh, I'm wearing socks and all my feet are wet. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna head to my friend's studio, Balance Studio, Nick Laidlaw, you guys know him, and we're gonna do the ultimate mobility routine for surfers. Let's get into it now. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. My thumb's feeling a little bit better. I'm gonna get in the water again soon. Yoop. <laughs> My name is Nick Laidlaw, uh, I'm a holistic movement and lifestyle coach. Most sports do lend themselves to asymmetric movement, so surfing's not unique in that, but it's also, yeah, it does, does provide wear and tear over a long period of time. I generally see a very pronated set of shoulders, so the shoulders that are rolling inwards, tight upper pecs like pec minor, um, tight upper traps so that's the muscles of the neck and a very leaning forward kind of hit forward head position. We're doing one motion over and over and over again so that's going to have its drawbacks over time. Then I see surfers getting into the later stages when they're getting into their 30s and 40s. I see hip issues come in really frequently so locked up hips um, and then locked up lower backs as well from being very sedentary in our normal life and then we go out and want to explode and be as powerful as a pro is without the conditioning. So today Kale's asked me to put together a few mobilizations which are going to be beneficial for your surfing. So I've chosen a couple that are going to open up the hips and some advan advancements to make them more dynamic and then some that are going to mobilize the spine and connect the spine, give you the ability to articulate and move, the, make, move each vertebra on its own. Uh, and then one that's really good for the shoulders, for the health of our shoulders. So the first one is just a lateral lunge. So a lunge moving from left to right. We want to encourage ourselves to be strong in a low position. So you do loads and loads of squats and deadlifts or strength exercises, nothing wrong with them at all, but that's going to build a strength in a certain range of movement, which is appropriate. It's not going to allow you to go as low to the depths that we do in surfing or to the extension that we do in surfing. We also get ourselves in really weird positions when we're surfing, so out of that perfect linear range. So the lateral lunge is gonna get us lower to the ground and get us strong when we're low to the ground. So you do that by starting in a squat position. Your hips can be as high as you like with this and your hands can always act as a buffer. But to do this lateral lunge, lean onto the left side let the heel come off as it, as it will. Slide the right leg out so that it's super long and then just cross your hands over and shift the weight onto your right. Good, dig the heel in, pull the toes back. You should feel like an opening on the hips. Yeah, good. And then we just use the hands from left to right. Good. In surfing, we use our hands so much to counterbalance and to extend and um, em em embellish movements really. So you can use your hands how you see fit as well to be able to help you travel from one side to the other. Shifting that weight. And then once you're comfortable with that, without the hands, you can just travel in space. So you can go shifting from right to left. Once you get over to the left, bring your right leg towards the left and take the left leg again. So shifting three steps one way, three steps the other way. So it makes it more dynamic. And then what we're searching for is a bit of a springy, soft quality. Good. <laughs> For the 90-90 stretch, we want to see if we can create two 90 degree angles. So I want to see a straight line from the hip to the knee and then from the knee to the foot. That's on the front leg. And then I want to see the same on the back leg, a straight line going out from the hip to the knee, knee to the foot. Encourage the front knee through the floor while extending the chest, so keeping the spine long. And then I want you to hinge forward without rounding out the back at all. Physical result. Every breath out, a little bit deeper. If you can achieve that position, even if you're moving forward a millimetre, or even in your mind, encouraging that front knee through the ground, you can then trace your hands around the outside of the leg and rotate the spine to make it a little bit more appropriate to a dynamic position. So this is gonna open up the hips, the outside of the butt. Spend more time on the tightest side. Depending on which stance you are, it will be different. I don't wanna give that away, so you need to explore that yourself. Uh, and then we can make that more dynamic. 
we're going to reach, if we're doing the left side first, left hand on the ground, reach the right leg out in front. You're balancing on the little toe side of the foot as you press off your left hand. Move forward onto the right hand, then the right knee, and then we repeat on the other side. Extend the leg forward, the outside edge of the foot, I call it the knife edge of the foot that we balance on. We push off our right hand, land onto our left hand for balance and stability, and we walk forward. And then over time, you can do it without your hands at all, from one side to the other. third exercise is some, a series of hanging. So I've shared this with you guys before. We want to decompress the spine as much as we can. Um, like I said, we're pronated commonly in the shoulders. So one nice way to assist that would be to allow gravity to help us. So we're gonna get strong with the grip. We're gonna shrug our shoulders and let our whole body be really heavy and lengthen through the upper back. Uh, grip on. kale has got a bit of an injury, so we'll, we'll be easy on him for being a puss. Um, grip on strong. Let your shoulders shrug. The grip is the only strong thing we need. Everything else soft. So I want Kale to be soft through the shoulders, soft through the lower back, and just let himself breathe it out. It's not easy to breathe when you're in this position if it's not new to you, but I want him to breathe it out. You can do various things while, while you're here. You can very gently turn from left to right. You can have a little bit of a shake without bending the elbows. From there, what we're going to want is to take the stress out of our neck and shoulders and pecs and move the strength more into the trapezius. So move, move the, shoulder, the strength more into the scapulas, the shoulder blades, and the upper back. So we're gonna start pulling without bending the elbows. So we're just literally shrugging our shoulders by pulling against gravity as far as we can without bending our elbows. Take one second to come up, hold for a second, take one second to come down. 10 repetitions, two or three times over if you can. The progression from there is to raise your chest in the direction of the bar without bending the elbows. So you're going to take a deep breath in, squeeze the glutes, lift your chest in the direction of the bar and the head going back behind you. So you're arching your back. I want you to see if you can gain the integrity and the strength to hold for three seconds at a time and come down. You repeat that five times, a couple of, couple of sets of that if you can. The progression after the scat pulls would be a toe tap. So you're going to combine essentially a scap pull where you draw your shoulders back, chest to bar, squeeze the glutes, then you're gonna tuck the tail under, keeping your arms straight, get your legs to touch the bar, or as close as you can to it. Once you can get your legs parallel with your hips, you're doing bloody well. Um, and then it's just a matter of getting your abdominals stronger. Um, but eventually you're gonna get your legs past the height of your hips to touch the bar. Slow down, slow up, three seconds up, three seconds down. We're going for our skin the cat. So what we're going to do there, pick your chest up, draw the knees into the chest. You're going to rotate, do a full circle so that your arms are completely opposing the way that you'd paddle. You're hanging your body forward. Then you're going to use the strength from the grip to charge up with the shoulders and bring yourself back very slowly with straight arms the whole time. This offers a very natural filtration system of your own strength. So try not to get go for the glory by bending the elbows because it will take away from the benefits that you can get for your shoulders and your spine. Designed, I see a lot of people, especially who are kind of beginner to intermediate, especially people that start later in life, when they're surfing, I don't, their spine looks like a block almost, so I don't see much movement in their spine. That could be a couple of reasons. For one, they, they could be protecting pain in their back, or for two, they might not just even, or you guys might not have the mobility in your spine, which is the case for me until I learn how to. So I wanna show you a spinal wave. So essentially, that has to do with articulating, so enlivening one vertebra at a time and getting each vertebra to be able to create motion. Uh, independent of each other. And we end up creating this nice oscillating effect of the spine, which helps to not only mobilize the spine, also hydrate the spine, nourish the spine, um, and send blood, oxygen, and energy to the spine. So it's a very valuable tool. We're going to lead the movement with the head. So the head is going to initiate the movement. Every other part of the spine, or the chest and the spine, is going to echo the head. Roll the spine, chin towards the chest, one vertebra at a time. Slowly, good, and then lift up, good. Now let's exaggerate it more, push the hips a bit further forward. Hips forward, good, and then go chin into the chest, 
and just let the whole back one vertebra at a time reverse this shape until the whole spine is round in line with the hips. More, 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 more. Good. And now look up first with the eyes. Good. Pull the chest forward, the abdomen, and then the hips. Squeeze the butt to protect the back. Roll down one vertebra at a time. Good. It seems like now is one of the best times that people could be productive when it comes to being maybe a little bit prophylactic in, in how they look after mm. their bodies for, for surfing. Absolutely. I think um, the biggest, the best training for surfing I'll, I'll stand by is, is surfing. Um, but now we're, we've got, we're in this climate where everybody's localised. What better time you need one, one or two metres of space just to, to find space in the body, to soften the hips, to open the spine and to, to really use this time to, uh, to, to better yourself. And if surfing is your context like it is for you and I, it's like, <laughs> bloody oath, get into it. Love it. All right, guys, well, thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, comment below. Join me on Instagram and also join Nick. I'm going to put his channel up here somewhere. Um, he's going to be uploading a lot more surf specific movement content now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I have. Epic. Right. Okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. You.